same. Let's just see who puts the priority where. Who's going to first pick, let's say, and Hecker him? Top lane here, or is it going to be banned away? So, Deficio, three out of five champions that both of these teams ran yesterday were shared. We need to see who has explored other options on 5.5. Unicorns taking away Zed, taking away Rumble. Siva off the board okay. from Vardex. So with Rumble being banned now, we should expect expect here Fnatic to go for an early Hecarim if they can. I think they really would value that so highly. We also know Lissandra is a fantastic flex pick for them because Febuen can play it in the mid lane. And despite her being nerfed a little bit, well, talk about Hecarim now it's been banned. Let's go to, Fe, to the Lissandra instead then for Fnatic. Yeah, so despite her being nerfed a little bit again, it doesn't really matter too much that her wave clear got hit and her early damage. It's about her team fight control, her pick potential, the hard CC, the point and click CC. That's where she really shines. So Fnatic can still go for her in the first rotation and use her as, as the flex pick. Let's see what they decide to do. Final ban, Maokai off the table and a wow. near insta-lock Annie from the Unicorns of Love, taking away one of Yellow Star's most successful champions, the Split and giving Hillisang the same pick he ran yesterday. And the reason people like to take this away from Yellowstar is, first of all, he's one of the main engages on, on, on Fnatic, but also he's so good at roaming early, and people are trying to push him on the likes of Ajana and play more defensive, where he can really impact the map the same way. That's why people like to take Annie away. He has played Leona in the past. That's a counter pick, obviously, to Annie can go for, but normally, at least the last few weeks, he would go for Thresh instead, because that opens up for more options. You can roam around on a Thresh here, you can skirmish really well, and you can deep ward very easily, because again, you have that Lancer to save your jungler when you're walking in two and two. Well, we'll find out what Yellowstar decides to prioritize later in the game with Zed off the table. Febivant may get his hands on LeBlanc. In fact, the oh, same the open. mid laner that he ran last time. And Sejuani actually saw a lot of bans yesterday. Yeah, she is. In my opinion, the best tank jungler at the moment. We got like Rexan Italy as the top two picks in terms of you know early pressure, and then you got Sejuani as the best tank because she can even almost match these guys in the early game. She's just fantastic all around. Seems like no jungle picks though. Graves instead, another one of those contested picks between the two teams. And really, Fnatic here already running fantastic strong lanes in Graves and LeBlanc, and we often see this LeBlanc early when Zed is being banned away. Kassadin is back. Buffed a little bit, but he still lost quite a lot of early power, so he's not as strong in this matchup into LeBlanc. I'm so glad you brought that up because we didn't see him picked or banned yesterday at all. It's not really a power of evil and champion it was, either. It was surprising across the entire day. One thing I just want to highlight for Febivin on LeBlanc, two games played, one win, one loss. Zero deaths to Fischio. He's gone 14-0-9 across the two games. So let's see if Fnatic's teamwork can work better. Kikis will be locking the same jungler as yesterday. And with Graves off the table, Vardax defaults to Caitlyn. And for the Unicorns now, you can even you can still go like Lulu Janna and run a full-on protect your AD carry in the late game. They ran this yesterday just with a Graves instead of a Caitlyn, also still having the Anuna for Kick is one of the best, another one of the great tank picks now. We've just seen how you can shut down an aggressive early jungler through great early vision with your sidestone and just being as annoying as possible on this Nunu. So fairly standard for the Unicorns in this sense, except for Caitlyn. While they have played a few times, it is a champion where you need to hit that pause button in the mid game. You can't just keep fighting and keep fighting, which is what they like to do. And one of the reasons is Caitlyn hasn't worked too well for them in the past. Because then they don't tend to be the team who dominate early and then, you know, go really late and let Vardak be the big carry. No, they aim to always finish the games as fast as possible. And that's tough with Caitlyn. It's going to be more fast pushing composition for them. All right, Pulse, wherever you are in the world, Challenger Caster Pulse is a Nautilus top Correction. Made. This can still be a Nautilus support. Now, this is what I was going to say. Is it top lane or is it support? We saw it in support. I'm trying to remember where. It was recent. Well, Elimination has been spamming it, at least, in yes. Stolic queue. So, and... I mean, it is a good support pick. I've seen it in solo queue a few times Deficio, where I'd always lose horribly because people don't know how to play it. Explain Nautilus to me. He's got more CC in his kit than anybody else. Right. So what you do now is you max your E on him because it was changed. So now it goes down to five second cooldown at rank five. Oh my which word, obviously what is, is a lot happening? Of this is crazy. I mean, <laughs> this patch, man. Now we're running an old school Yorick Cassiopeia composition where you have this suicide mid laner who just goes bazookas on the enemy team. And then you resurrect her once she dies. I mean, this is a Yorick top lane now from Visichachi. Potentially it's not a support, but can also be top lane. Can also be top lane. Somewhere, some, somewhere 
in the world, D-Man is crying out in pain as Yorick is locked in for the Unicorns of Love. And for Fnatic, they need to opt. This is either a support pick They can still go Lissandra here pick. and have an insane amount of engage. Or they can go Janna if they want more protection. A lot of engage is so good against Yorick, against Cassiopeia here. Their targets you can get to fairly easily and shut them down. But again, that would require them to play this Nautilus as a support. There's the Lissandra. I think it's going to be a lock-in. And Fnatic is running an absolutely insane CC comp. Yes, okay, Power Fever is going to be alive twice. <laughs> but he's going to get locked down twice as well. Very easily by Fnatic here. Deficio. This game is insane. Unicorns of Love are doing something that we've seen before. We've seen Yorick, we've seen Cassio, we've seen Nunu, we've seen Caitlyn. Fnatic, on the other hand, support Nautilus is very new. It is very new. It is, it's after the change where, again, you get five seconds cooldown on your E here. So you have an insane amount of AoE slow. Obviously, you have an ulti that you can't QSS, so it's going to guarantee to hit its target. So what you do from Yellowstar's side here is basically you walk him and you say, OK, Wes, let's, let's take Vardax. Ulti on him, you know the Lissandro TP is going to come in, you know the follow-up is going to come from the bank from a Sejuana, and you just blow up that guy. There's nothing he can do to avoid that knock-up. And if Leona does well against Annie, surely, 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 Nautilus can do well against Annie too. Yeah, I mean, it's not the sickest laning phase. It's not <laughs> terrible in the lane, but I, it's fine with the Graves here. That's going to be okay for Fnatic. And this Unicorns comp, it's something they ran before they got into the LCS. So it's like a very old school comp for them with the Yorick top lane and Power of Evil who can just go crazy in the mid lane and you just resurrect him. So it's a fantastic late game setup. Problem about Yorick and why we don't see him very often is he's so easy to gank in the lane. I mean, he's immobile, he's just running around with his shovel doing nothing. <laughs> So, I expect Fnatic to just go and kill him. Well, let's find out if Fnatic can do it. Hashtag UOL win. Hashtag FNC win. Let us know who you think will pick up the win. Yorick has always done well when paired with a late game hyper carry. And we saw a very, very scary Cassia appear in the European Challenger Series just two nights ago. Let's see if Power of Evil can get off to a good start. We know where the local fans are. You guys at home, jump on Twitter and let us know yeah. where you are. And despite some new picks with their Nautilus support, this really, once again, is such a good Fnatic composition because you got a strong early game, you got a fantastic mid game through Lissandro LeBanc Graves. They all spike so hard in the mid game, once again, one or two items completed, and you have so much hard engage if Unicorns of Love don't have proper wards down. They will get engaged on again and again and again. And they will just drop dead instantly. They gotta go full late game in this situation here. And they gotta get to that point where they control around objectives. A bit uh, like in the last game. Because Fnatic are just running so much engage. What I like about the comps, in stark contrast to our first game of the day, the... Uh, expectations here are going to be significantly high action. Pace. Yes, and we're going to get to see if Visichachi likes Power of Evil or Vardux the most. <laughs> There's going to be two guys who's going to be the targets, yeah, and cool. he's going to sit there with his ulti ready, and I bet you he's going to give it to Kikis at least once and be like, damn, that was wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast my mind back. Back, back, back in the day when Zen and the Stoic was still covering some games, and one of the terms that he ran for Yorick Omen of War was angry, Omen of Pestilence was stinky, and Omen of Famine was hungry. Q-W-E in Yorick. And it was always one of my favorite things to hear, because I thought it suited the ghouls' opinions and, you know, moods really effectively. Yeah, Hillisang trying to set up a small freeze to see if he did it. Yeah, it's going to slowly push down towards Unicorns of Love now, how he grouped up all the minions, made the focus the first one coming from Fnatic's Wave, so they saw the lane swap. Silbeck is not going to get the same freeze down here. But again, you can set up a fairly easy dive on a Yorick if he's only level 1 or potentially level 2, sitting under his tower, being all miserable and Yorick-ish. Yorick-ish. Well, this is a very exciting start to the game. Yellow Star is uh, pretending to be a ward. We'll see how this works out in his favor. We did see Chachi and Kick is holding hands. He didn't skill anything yet. He's going to get Q and get, wait for this push out here. Hillisang is coming to the mid lane. He's going to spot Kick is now. Oh, 
Fibbin just jumped forward here. He might be forced to flash. That's a flash down from Hillisang. Power of Evil has got the burning and the ignite and the poison ticking. Reign of his flash forward. Now Hoonies even come in for this one from the sideline. We do see the Riptide applying the slow. Fnatic's looking for first blood. Can they find it? 100 hit points to tick through. Power of Evil, no flash available. Fevervin, he's flashed, but there's nothing to follow up the signal of Malice. That was a wasted summoner, and nobody goes down. And four guys in the middle, and that means Visi Chachi, he's starting the opening to get down to this bottom lane here and do the one-on-one -on -one laning against Steelback. He got early level two from the Grump. He's now managed to get level three as well, so a good start for him. While Huni had to blow his flash, I got zero CS over one CS at this point. Still only level one. Big disadvantage for him now early on. Fnatic didn't manage to capitalize on four members in the mid lane. Let's take stock of summoner spells. One, two, three, four flashes and an ignite blown for Fnatic. Yellow Star's gonna root Chachi in place, but he's gonna, gonna be very he careful. He's down flash. to 100 HP. Summoner heal used. Yellow Star overestimating Nautilus's tankiness. And just to wrap that up, flash and exhaust from Power of Evil, flash and ignite from Hillisang. Overall, more summoners spent from Fnatic, especially with that summoning heal trade. Yeah, and Fnatic at this point, they're gonna have to put Hunyo up in this top lane together with Rainover and push out the wave because Vardax is sitting on his own, just freezing. You gotta push that into the tower, make the tower kill the minions and reset the whole thing. Otherwise, they're gonna be in a massive disadvantage in that top lane. Obviously, Yorick is gonna be a bit of a tanky one going into late. And even if he does nothing other than running your face, he still has an ulti that can win you games. And we'll Man, see Source it. is sitting at home clapping right now. <laughs> Yorick is being played again. <laughs> so as we well, need to get back into the LCS with Origin, maybe maybe he'll keep playing Yorick. We saw Yorick jungle last year as well. Was it Airwax that ran it? It was. I think it was Airwax. It, we saw it once for a very good reason. Once, okay, right. It was, it was like one of his solo queue picks, I remember coming in, we kind of hyped it up a little bit, he picked it. No, no, I think no, it no, was no. like 0-5. There would have been no we hyped it up. I, I hyped it there up. There we go. That's it's a Yorick jungle, man. <laughs> All the way back Season 3 Worlds, I remember OMG running it, Loveling. I believe it was playing, not Loveling, it was uh, Pom Pomelo. Oh, he was just what? It was, lo it was Loveling. It was Loveling at they the time. They keep swapping around, no, they kept swapping around. It was Loveling playing it no. and destroying Lemon Dogs with it. Double stun from Hellasang to get some damage on the steal back. Yellow Star there does have level three to his name, but the big story is the CS difference between Vizichachi. 25 to two. Huni is yeah. really being gutted. It is slowly pushing back towards Huni now, but he's gonna have to wait quite a while before he gets any CS. And also Raynover needs to stay around this lane in case Kikis shows up and forces Huni back. He still has no flash. That's also why we can see Sejuani currently sitting near the top side. I mean, he needs some help pushing this one out if they want to secure him farm now. Delicious. Otherwise, he's going to keep falling further and further behind. Yorick is great in a swap in terms of sitting and farming. If you don't push it in and dive him, he will get all this farm here, just using all, obviously, his ghouls from range. Something we do have to touch on. All those flashes down don't mean a lot because Nunu's not the greatest at ganking. You see the Glacial Path into the root. Vardax takes a lot of damage, but the support from Hillisan means Rainov is now the one that's in trouble. He did get a decent enough trade, and Huni comes out healthy enough. And a very good read from the Unicorns. They were expecting Fnatic to try and push out this top wave, so they just put, simply put uh, Hillisan back up there. Also because Vizichachi can handle himself now. Missed from Yellowstar. Look at all the damage he's taking. So Vizichachi is going to be more than happy. He didn't get punished in the swap because of the four-man dive in the mid lane. A four-man gang. And really good start for the Unicorns. Good damage from Febivin onto Kikis. He's just going to consume a minion and get himself out of it. Picked up that Skirmishes, in fact, as his Tier 2 jungle item. That's a European thing on these Nunos here. It's all about late game. You run to the enemy AD carry, you Ice Blast him, and you just smite him, and he does no damage to you. That's the whole goal around the Skirmishes from, from Kikis. Now, Dragon has been started by Fnatic, because Hillisang showed himself in the top lane. But Power of Evil is here to try and stop it. This is scary. Level 3 on Yellow Star. Fnatic forced back. No ultimates from the Unicorns of Love yet. But Huni, he's picked the fight he shouldn't have. Gonna slow Hillisung. Down to 100 HP. Hillisung is chasing. Did have Flash, but opted not to jump in. And Unicorns of Love are bullying Fnatic around the map. They've got themselves a 1,000 gold advantage. And Huni still yet to get CS. Averaging one a minute. And everyone from Fnatic was forced back there except for Febivan after they started the Dragon. Despite knowing that Unicorns had at least three guys around it, 
Very green. You can see how Kiki is now saying, okay, I'm going to... Watch it down. That somber moment. Let it sink in. He will be back in six minutes. And he and will you be kill him again. Wow, dude. <laughs> That's brutal. That's how it works. <laughs> All right. It's not fun being the dragon here. <laughs> no, it's not. Dragon number one goes to the Unicorns of Love. Huni found himself some un uncontested farm. And also Power of Evil here yesterday. Well, let's just see what happens first. Oh, is here that again. was a was great beautiful petrifying start. gaze. Catches Featherfin the moment he jumps in. Power of Evil. Insane. Famine or Feast. He either wins the game for his team or is non-existent, and that's the way to start. Such a sick ulti. I mean, this is obviously the Cassiopeia master power of evil, and he built Luden's Echo, the new item, yesterday and Syndra. It is even better on this champion for him. I think he's going to go for it again now. He has the tier already. That could be his next oh, pickup. Oh, Luden catches engaged. two. The shard catches them both. Power of Evil's down. Fnatic, look for Hillisung. He's down. <laughs> the Omen of Death onto Hillisung. We have the ghost of Annie's past throwing out fireballs. Not the greatest <laughs> on the first usage for that one. But I'll give Chachi the benefit of the doubt. Hey, he lost Power of Evil earlier. We said there would be action when Fnatic plays, and when they didn't run like four types of engage on their composition, they gank the mid lane first. Now, <laughs> second gank here, two kills, still back a swap to that top lane with a massive wave. He's gonna get pushed in, but Yorick is back. Now another gank on Tovada. Vardax is in trouble, Fevervin, he dashes forward, he lands the chains, Vardax is going to get well. rooted, but here comes the TP from Huni. can they get more? Kick oh, is, oh manages to give Vardax a couple steps longer, but it's not enough. All of a sudden, Steelback is in trouble, Hillisang stuns him up, the collateral damage was thrown down, Summoner Heal used, Flash still available, Steelback forced to run away, Chachi low on mana, he's flashed forward for this one, the yeah, Ghoul's not here. tanking it, Hillisung does not connect. We do see the hook land. Yellow Star stuns him up, but there's no depth charge to follow it up. Sealback is low on HP, but both of them low on mana. And that dredge line connecting, but not doing enough work for Yellow Star and Fnatic. Man, I love these two supports here. Just roaming everywhere to the mid lane, to the side lanes, trying to set up a few kills. TP was used by Huni before to at least get an assist in the bottom lane, and obviously Fibber ends up dying to Power of Evil. Now he's jumping in again. I still want to see that Luden's Echo on a Kazuyu up here. You keep moving, you keep spamming, you get into proc so many times. It's a great early item. And we'll see how early Power of Evil can pick it up. Tower number one will be falling in a moment or two as Fnatic making up, I think, for some small mistakes early. For sure. Got for themselves sure. a kill advantage, a tower advantage. And actually bringing themselves back into it. If you look at the gold on Huni with those three assists and a little bit of CS, he's actually even in gold with his opposite number, Vizichachi. I think that's important considering how shut down he was for the first eight minutes of the game. Yeah, very important with these assists and the early tower. I like how they used Steel by Key on Graves. Really found some, honestly, some success on this champion in the early game, which he didn't have on Corky. Yesterday he looked great on Graves. Now the <laughs> same here when he's swapping him around. Hillisang is back down to this bottom lane. He cannot sit still. Look at the mini-map. Rainover he does have the option to go over that wall. Glacial Prison is available, but decides not to use it. And we do see Cinder Hulk has been completed for Rainover, so that clear speed will be oh, rapidly Hillisang. increased. No flash. Oh, managed to dance around. The Fnatic keeps staying around the jungle in here. Look for Kikis now. Should be able to find him. Oh, nice yeah, flash. You think they do? Where is the prison? Not needed yet. The dredge line catches Kikis. That's a petrifying gaze onto Fnatic, but Kikis should still fall. I lied to you. He's managed to get away. No, he didn't. He's we dead. did see Febovic go down in the mid lane. Power of Evil's got two. Continues to chase through, and it did look like the Ignite dropped Kikis in the back line. Two for two. This is just. This is fun. We got three kills on the support Nautilus. The first <laughs> one we have seen now in Europe for a yellow star. It's been roaming around. Obviously, the problem is you're not really going to get too many points in your W early, so you're still going to be fairly squishy. 
But we see the amount of CC he brings. I mean, I think Nautilus is the champion with the most CC in the game. Just like from his passive to one hit, the Eve to slow, and oh, Tabor's under steel back. He's fine. Well, that hurt. That was a painful tip. It might result in the tower. Here's a replay. Good luck to Fischio. All right, so oh, flash him first. That was nice. And they're going, so they lock him down, but they don't really again want that Nuno here. It's about getting to Power of Evil, so there's a good ulti from both Kickers and Power of Evil. A lot of damage, and that's why they trade two for two, and of course, Looney is always joining the team whenever they're fighting. He's never gonna let them fight alone. The Holo Master, and two for two trade. I have to admit, Power of Evil looks terrifying already. And he's, even not even, worse -like he's not even built AP, right? Yeah. That's the scary thing. So we need to see how effectively Power of Evil can bring himself into this matchup. The only, the only problem is Unicorns are hemorrhaging towers. It is expected though here, once we move to the mid game again, you have double tier, so you obviously need to stack those first to make you a bit weaker in the mid game. And you're against the Graves, you're against the Lissandra and the LeBlanc. So it is expected for the Unicorns to fall behind now. As long as they keep it to this kind of gold deficit, it's okay. Problem is Fnatic obviously gonna look for way more. They already got two out of Toads. Mid lane dropped down before, and the bottom run is the last one, so just put still back, back down there, push in the wave, and roam in with four guys like they've done before. Because you can keep on testing vision around the jungle of Unicorns when there's a, like a Nuno, because Nuno doesn't offer anything in terms of the fights. So you can very safely walk into the jungle, place a few deep boards, and then you can walk down behind the dragon to the bottom lane, four guys really quickly, and force that tower down. Well, we'll see if Fnatic decides to do that. Quick touch and CS differences as Huni is evened up with Visit Chachi. Febivan takes an ace in the hole. As Fnatic look to start the dragon. This is a little bit risky. You can see Huni's not there. Teleport will be available it's fine. in a moment. It's fine. But Chachi's a mile away and yeah. nobody from Unicorns is responding. But again, Unicorns, they don't want to fight right now. You're stacking tears. I mean, look at the Yorick. You have a Ruby Crystal and a Dawn's Blade. That's your combat stats. I mean, that's nothing. So they need way more time. Oh, Good call from. Fnatic and Vardax, he's in trouble. They have Dolce. The charge is gonna knock him up. The prison's gonna lock him down. Rainover's gonna flash forward. Hillisung and Vardax are going to get away. And they get the teleport oh, from Vizichachi. Now Huni is in a little bit of trouble. Got to be careful as he does make it away. Oh, he stepped on the trap. Oh. Never mind, I got hyped for nothing. Got excited. Well, we're both getting excited in this one. 5-3, Power of Evil gonna punish Fnatic being down in the bottom lane by taking the mid tower. Second one of the game and evening up that goal difference. So we saw Fnatic try and do what we just mentioned, how you can very quickly move to that bottom lane, force a kill and then take the tower. Problem was it backfired because Vardak stayed alive, used all his summoners, and then the mid lane were left open. This is very important for the Unicorns. They keep getting global gold in this mid game while they're still stacking up to the late game. They want to try and get a oh. kill on Rain over, not going to happen. But look at Vardak well, here. Snake bites don't kill bears. Good point. 0-1-0, zero, zero. Caitlyn doesn't kill bears either, or people, in this case, you haven't gotten to use your early game power. You are very weak in the mid game. So Vardax is not going to offer a whole lot. This is going to be all about power of evil with the early kills. Febrim will even be able to get some damage. I really don't think Vardax likes Febrim. That's two ace in the holes back to back. It's not going to result in a whole lot of pressure. We do see Huni trying to wave clear as best as he can. Got that Marilla Nomicon completed. And the support of Renov, but look at the damage that Chachi's putting with those ghouls. Constantly throwing out those omens of famine over and over and over. Sustaining and poking Huni out, he's got no armor yet. Basically, he's rolling his head over the keyboard, because he's playing Yorick. <laughs> and he's just spamming everything. What was the technical term? Face roll, I believe? Face rolling? That's a phrase I have not heard in a while. Because you haven't seen Yorick in a while. <laughs> That's also true. I'll have a look. Yellow Star, he's really enjoying uh, cosplaying a ward. Chilling in the enemy jungle. Oh, that's a flash to us! Huni's in trouble and Huni's down! Holo Holo Holo's out! Chachi and Hillesang now looking to set up on the tower. That was a, honestly an easy pickup. Yeah, I think uh, after that tower got down They're in the bottom, right, it's not over, no. Rain oh, over. Glacial Prison missed again. Rain over didn't connect. Kickers has thrown Blood Boil, flashed forward and Ice Blast Huni in the face. Look for the dredge line, that'll knock Vardax up. Flash, buckshot, collateral damage available. One more hit, does land. Steal back, bounces one in reply. Two for one, Unicorns get the tower. Good luck, Deficio. Again, it's <laughs> a lot of things happening here. I'm not really too sure, but it's still worth it for the Unicorns. They got obviously the two kills and they got another tower, more global goal for them. Fnatic though, they're teleporting in now. 
And oh, Yellow Star is on his way. Oh, here we go There's again. The the Round slow. 27. Yellow Star is looking for a target. His dredge line kick is his Chachi. Will be the first focus. Feathervin plus Huni get the kill. Absolute zero channels. And Feathervin goes 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Fnatic respond. Find unicorns out of position. Grab themselves two uncontested kills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't even know, man. We're 18 minutes in and everyone is just dying left and right. They keep roaming around. I mean, have we had a laning phase in this game? Or has it just been pure roaming from the start? Dude, it ended at like 1 minute 30 with a four-man dive onto Power of Evil. So, now all out of turns are gone. It's an even battlefield. We've seen two supports roaming. So far, Yellowstar has gotten the better of it. Three kills, four assists. Going for Righteous Glory as well on this Nautilus, so we'll get quite a lot of HP, which obviously works well with his W there. And there's the Luden's Echo. Here an Echo. echo from Echo. Why do you like Luden's Echo on Cassiopeia? Well, oh, whoa, 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 hold let's on. Let's talk about on. that after, yeah. Feathervin He's plus Huni. This is scary. He's oh, dead. Snake got bitten. Exhaust comes out, and look at the scary thing. Despite the blind check. Pepperbin almost got taken out. So the reason I like it, first of all, you already get a lot of movement speed from your Q at the 7% as well from it. Great, more movement speed, dodge around, perfect. Second, you stack it so fast because every spell is 20 stacks on it. So whenever you sit there and you just spam your Twink Fang, it goes up so fast and you get more procs from it. And even if you put down your W and people step into it, they're going to get that proc and take the damage. So there's so many things working for Power Viewer with that one item. Obviously it makes him extremely squishy. So he's going to have to rely on being together with the team and Visi Chachi here to get to use it as often as possible. Otherwise, he's just going to drop dead every time. Fnatic now, because they got that kill, pushing in. We talk about this strong, strong mid game they do have. So that's why they're in the lead, despite the Unicorns getting quite a lot of towers early on. Oh, There's that's another a ult from Yellowstar. As well as the oh, death one, charge. One. Did not want that one. Spider Nautilus, Spider Nautilus runs away with the giant hook. I don't really know why. I'm not sure that's yeah, how this song goes. Yeah, that was, a bit, that was a bit bad. I'm getting a bit excited here. Flash is blown. And we do see Unicorns of Love with a positional. That was a tip is onto Huni. Stuns him up, but after the Glacial Path. Unicorns, they're hammering away on the inner turret. We do see Rain of a Glacial Prison available. Does he want to throw it up? The answer seems to be no. Here comes the rest of Fnatic from behind. Remember, no depth charge available. Oh, he got the three charge for three. Power of Evil tries to put some damage and apply. It's in fact Kickers that goes down first. Yellowstar pulling the attention on the back line while Feathervin is still back. Vivo. Being zoned away by the Ghost of Christmas past. We did see Power of Evil get given the Omen of Death and the Unicorns of Love come out with a fantastic team fight. Oh. He's Two alive. for four, and that's how Yorick plus Cassio works. Yeah, and Fnatic with the engage. Look at that, the Power Rangers are even in the house. <laughs> I want to see that engage again. Not sure how Fnatic managed to lose it, because they got a pretty good ulti from Rainover. We're supposed to just blow up these targets, and then you disengage away or kill the Ghost a second time. But Unicorn's getting everything they want. You have a fed Power of Evil, step one for him to win. Oh. You have a dead support, that's not step two, <laughs> by the way, but... By having that fed mid laner with a Yori Gulti, that's enough clearly to win fights for them because Vardex is sitting on Vintage on a Caitlyn. I mean, it's not really him. He's just pushing a tower. All he's going to do. But Dragon, it's going to be started, but it might not be secured because the rest of Fnatic is coming. Holy moly. And they only have one thing to do, and that's keep Chuck going in. Chuck gone. He gets caught by the dredge line, rooted by Huni. Feathervin pops him. Dragon goes to Unicorns of Love. Huni's looking for more. Uh, he doesn't have the him. ability to lock anybody up. Glacial Tomb on cooldown, not even needed to <laughs> <laughs> kick his, throwing out the laugh emote. And Fnatic get two kills, but they lose the dragon. Are well, they the seriously lane, going though. barren? Well, the thing is, you have top lane pushing down here, so Unicorn's got to go and protect that one. And if they do go to stop this Baron, you don't have the Yori Golti this time for Power of Evil. And you still have so much engage on Fnatic side here. They can start the Baron and quickly just stop it and turn around and engage on the Unicorns. And we'll see if they do that. Glacial Prison and Tomb is available. Unicorns of Love are putting some poke down. Yellow Star eats the ace in the hole, throws out the dredge line. They've got Power of Evil! He did get the stun down! The petrifying gaze was out! Fnatic need to be careful. They're low on HP as Baron helps to at least put some damage on the back line, but it's a two for zero. The Unicorns stop the Baron. That is important to note. So Fnatic up what they wanted. Some more kills here by just forcing that Baron. 
now, okay. Okay, this is the bad but there's been like three or four fights already we haven't even got to see. So Power of Evil, I mean, look at the damage he can do. Is that with a four his man, three or four man petrifying game? There was a lot of people. Oh my word. Wow, they didn't start. Okay, so Jorg is tanking it now. He's sitting on the pip here. Vardux trying to kill the guy. No, no, now <laughs> Rainov is here. Rainov is here. He's got smite available. He's down. Absolutely kill the channel. Baron is still alive. Baron, no, it's Yuri that goes down. Nunu taken out. His yellow star steal back. Look to clean up the house. Visit Chachi. Already threw out that Omen of War onto Kikis. Baron secured by Unicorns. Two for two trade in the fight. And Febivin, Yellow Star, they're not done. 23 and a half minutes into the game. We have got 29 kills on the board. Five towers to three in favor of Unicorns. And unicorns with a Baron buff. Yes, Trevor. Yes. <laughs> and as predicted, we're going to get a Yori Gulti on that Noonan. That was smart. He got to consume the Baron for Kikis. All right. Okay. So let's look at it here. Unicorns at this point are strong enough to team fight. As long as they don't all get blown up instantly from the engage of Fnatic, we've seen the damage power Weaver can do in two rounds. They also have fantastic ability to fast push a tower with Nuno Caitlyn. If they do manage to group five people on that one tower, where Fnatic on their side. It's all about getting that jump. Look at the damage. I mean, that was wow. the Luden's Echo, an E, and a Q for Power of Evil. 50%. Well, Power of Evil's got his hands onto that blue buff. Forced Febivin away. The rest of Fnatic reeling as they deal with the pressure that Power of Evil's putting on the map. Yeah, really, the scary thing is, this is so good for the Unicorns because they have survived that mid-game. From Fnatic, they got a Baron from it. They're just slightly behind in goal as well. Fantastic situation when you consider how good the late game comp is going to be. Now let's see what they can do with this. Three members still with Baron. They're pushing down the bottom lane. Fnatic not in a position to fight and no teleport from Huni yet. The tower safely secured by Unicorns of Love. Fnatic simply did not want that one. Let's see if they can find an engage. Base gates on the side lane can actually be used quite effectively with the Sejuani. If Rainover wants to go that route. Also, with Yellow Star, he's got that Righteous Lori picked up. An additional HP and lots of HP stacking. Love the animation of Luden's Echo. Whoop. Trying to get his W to at least give him a bit of a shield. Not skilling it up here, doesn't need the damage from it. Instead, you need less cooldown on your E, which is the first one he maxed. But again, the people want to play Nautilus support, max your E first. Roam around the map because you have fantastic ganks early on and you can also engage a fight. Well, let's see what they do. Huni decides not to follow in with the glacial path. Kikas is being chunked out by Rainover and Rainover is taking damage in return. Inhibitor will fall. Fnatic have not gone all in for this one. Super minions secured in favor of the Unicorns of Love. Fnatic unable to find the opening they were looking for. Huni still does not have that hourglass. That's a whole lot of don't go there pings. Pretty wisely, but man, the Unicorns have been so good at trading objectives here. Every time Fnatic dove them somewhere and took a tower, they managed to respond elsewhere and keep it even early on. And then, of course, all the dragon fights going on and Power of Evil getting these early kills. It's really just been fantastic for them. Doesn't even have a fully stacked tier yet on the Yorick. He's been pretty slow, sitting on 700 mana at this point. Inhibitor down. Fnatic is going to have to try and find and engage. Place a pink ward around this wall where you see this ward is being placed by the Unicorns and you have a flank opening if you want to start the fight. They did just place the pink ward as well. So that's where you're going to get your opening from to start the fight. There. Mr. Chachi is going to die. Well, Mr. Chachi throws down the omen of death on himself. And new Not Chachi. the way Unicorns want this team comp to work, but now Power of Evil's in place. He's looking for an engage. Huni does not follow up on the E. Waiting for Visit Chachi's Ghost of Time. It just has. Fnatic, numbers advantage, but unwilling to commit further. You never want to walk into a Cassiopeia. And Fnatic wisely back away. I want to touch on something really quickly, Deficio. If Fnatic lose this game, it will be tied with H2K for that second place position. 11 wins, 5 losses, which would set up that Fnatic H2K battle next week as a potential second place decider. There is a lot on the line here for the current number two team in Europe. TB from the charge here. They don't want to give up this dragon. There's no ulti just yet. 
Unicorns really want that one ready. It's a very important part of their comp here. Look at the top wave pushing in. If they force Fnatic to stay around this dragon, those minions will do a lot of damage. It might even just abandon go straight for this top lane, or bottom lane, sorry, instead. We got the Nuno Kate lane. We can destroy these towers. Well, Unicorns. Also set you up to be flanked, though. Got a few good wards on the side. <laughs> and now you have nowhere to go. <laughs> okay. Let's see who comes out ahead. Yellow stop does not connect with the dredge line. Hooney, he's got in. That's a flash W. He's called Power of Evil. Collateral damage is going to be shield away by the Archangel shield. Steelback is down. Power of Evil soloed him. Featherman being forced away. The exhaust burned through his damage. Despite the fact Power of Evil is down, he is still managing to wreak havoc thanks to that Ghost of Christmas past. Rainover is looking for the support of Hillisang and he finds him. But the Battle Bear is down. Power of Evil finds another one. Two for four. And the Unicorn set their sights on another inhibitor. Turrets. Such a good fight again here. Yeah, all the focus on Fnatic is on Power of Evil, and it doesn't even matter because once he goes down, he's back. That's a perfect score when you have a Yorick. You died six times, but you got seven kills. So you've done your job, and they're pushing in for the finish. Oh, well, it looks like they can. Unicorn's chance erupt. Hooney has to pull off a godlike defense. He's oh, got the support of Yellow Star. They've got kickers, but he flashes away. Yellow Star unable to find another target. Unicorns get a Nexus turret, but Fnatic hold on by the skin of their teeth. Baron up in 50 seconds. Last time Fnatic tried to start it, they baited Unicorns in for a few picks. You see it again though, so Engage coming in. Puni got a lot of CC down and the Hourglass, but notice here, Power of Evil. He's still very healthy. Ignore the replay, people died, now more people are gonna die. Kick is... Well, one guy. Hey, you're not wrong. Two, oh, Chachi's two. caught up by Febivin. What can Chachi do? Omen of death, yeah. not available, so unable to ult himself. Right. Is it Baron time again? Unicorns get Dragon, Fnatic get two seconds. kills. I saw this movie last time. It didn't end well for Fnatic. Ah, okay. Was it a good movie though? Well, if you're a Unicorns fan, they stopped the Baron and got kills. So, I guess it depends which camp you lie in, uh, uh, Deficio. Well, we had all the fans cheering for Huni earlier. That's not Heard a few people call out for the Unicorns. So, Baron, it's gonna be started. Just respawn, look at the fancy animation. And now we're gonna kill him. Uh, let's see, how quickly can Unicorns respond? Do they even want to? The answer appears to be no. No vision in the pit, nowhere near. And Fnatic, dare I say it, regain control? Until their inhibitor respawns, no, I don't think that's fair. Have anyone really been in control in this game? Oh, okay, that's fair. That, <laughs> like you know minute what? That, one. Yeah. You know what? I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. No, you have a point, though. You have a point. They got the Baron now. Small goalie that doesn't really matter anything at this point, because we've already really gotten to that late game point. Vardax has basically just been killing towers all game long. While Power of Evil has been killing Fnatic as often as he could. And the Yorick pick so far has been working. The old school Unicorns comp, they used to run this again before they got into the LCS. Before anyone really knew who the Unicorns were. Now we all know exactly what they are. Well, Fnatic have a penchant for playing bloody games. The record for most kills in a matchup in the spring split was 50. And it was Fnatic versus the Copenhagen Wolves, Deficio. We're currently getting closer and closer to that. 38 on the board. I think uh, 12 more could be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've had a Power range in the audience. We've had uh, OG and Cake Fan, and we've had this sign is useless. I love you guys. That's awesome. See? Yay. Oh. There's a few. So, Fnatic, 32 minutes on the clock, small gold lead, got Baron, and their inhibitors respawn. Deficio, can you make sense of what their next step would be? Well, I like what they've been doing now to set up the bottom lane. Minion wave, you can see how they're slowly pushing up, and then you just start grouping because the Unicorns are not exactly running any way of pro... Well, never mind that, because Uni, he's getting jumped. Helisang's in trouble, he's down, but where is Power of Evil? Down to 50% HP. Omen of Death not been used yet, as Huni is out in the background. Power of Evil's... No, no Power of Evil! Chachi was is out that of game? position! Steelback and Fnatic have found four! Kick us in full retreat! A one for four trade and a Baron buff minion! Fnatic beyond the inhibitor turret, they're pushing through! Minions are coming here, you can see they're pinging them on the minimap, they got the Baron still trying to push in. It's just a lonely Nunu trying to defend. Is it enough? Can Kiki scare them away? 
Fnatic, they're uh. waiting. They've got minions. I don't know if it's enough. 15 seconds before Chachi is up. Vardex getting closer. Kickers is trying to pull attention, but it got this not enough. The Nexus Hellis Tone is here. down. Hellis Tone's in place. He needs to have a magic, magic stun, but he's not going to because he's in trouble. Feathervan continues to focus the turret. Hellis Tone is down. The Nexus turret is down. They're on to the Nexus. Fnatic looks like they're stunned. At 33 minutes, Fnatic are taking down the Unicorns of Love. No! A few more hits. No, no, no. What? What? I cannot understand this game. Unicorns of love. It wasn't using their nexus. Kick his and Hellasang together. Managed to stop for long enough. Okay, so let's see the engage from before. Chachi didn't manage to get down his ult. He gets stunned at first. All the focus now is on Huni. Hellasang goes down. Where's the ult from Chachi? Not there yet. He's not CC'd. Power of Weaver is still alive. He's the guy we're looking at. Simply just no reaction there. He got pulled in in the end. And that's why they lose the fight. <laughs> but the manly Nuno and then <laughs> Hillisang <laughs> got in there. And now they got him. So now another fight. Oh. Okay, Vardag's down. 5v4. There are supers to deal with in the middle lane. And Fnatic may want to use a numbers advantage. So, it's a couple of love taps. That's all Fnatic needs. Don't have Xpeki anymore though to backdoor that one, but they're going in again. Oh, that's a petrifying case. They've caught two. Power of Evil is down. That one was down Hellis though. Sangi and Chachi are trying to get away. We do see the Omen of Death. What can Power of Evil do from beyond the grave? He's caught Steel back. But that, that is the most number of kills we've seen in the Spring Split. 14 minutes quicker than before. Yellow Star, the right door. Door. I've seen this before. It happened at Worlds and it didn't go in Fnatic's favor. Will their fate be different? Nexus is going the down. Who needs TP? Oh, no, 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 no. It's what Fnatic are cheering. We see Rain of his down. Who needs it again? It's happened again. Deficio, it's happened again. Fnatic are not able to defend the Nexus. They've got supers barreling down the mid lane. What can the super minions do? Get that super minion. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Someone Fnatic. call Pekki. We need Pekki in here, man. Otherwise, that Nexus is so never listen, gonna die. Listen, 5.5. We changed turret health. We changed turret shields. Rito, please. Nexuses are too damn tanky. All right, another engage. This time, though, Chachi gets down to ulti before Power of Evil dies. That's the important one, because notice as soon as he goes down, Fnatic starts running away from him. They don't try and kill the ghost. They just keep trying to kite him. Kiki's joints in. Still back goes down. No CC to lock Power of Evil or anything. And you can see how the rest of Fnatic are saying, we're done fighting. We're just going to try and kill that Nexus. This is support Nautilus, though, with like zero damage. And obviously the teleport from Huni as well. Unicorn's got the fourth dragon. <laughs> Only one for Fnatic. It is still not over. Everyone is alive. What summoners do we have? Vardex, no flash. Power of Evil, no flash. A lot of flashes down for the Unicorns. Same thing we said for Fnatic, so basically there's been a lot of fights. I, I have no idea what to think anymore. Fnatic with that Nexus, again, <laughs> just flashbacks, and we were touching on that team fight. 50 kills was the number to beat. It was Fnatic Wolves last time. Fnatic Unicorns of Love blown that out of the water. 14 minutes quicker, six kills more. And it all comes down to Power of Evil. Can he take out Fnatic? He's got two lives to do it if Chachi hits the right buttons. Because we've seen what happens when Chachi doesn't. The unicorns are on the aggressive. And the guard minions coming, sitting here, just trying to push this one into the Nexus, forcing Fnatic back. And then you can just quickly go down once these minions hit the bottom lane tower. They got that Nunu. Blood boy in the cater and that tower is going to die, die extremely fast. Engage potentially, no. Oh, yeah, they're going in. Raynov is thrown in the Glacial Bridge, but there's want. no support to follow it up. Dredge line is still up for Yellow Star, as is the tomb from Huni. Kickus, low on mana, low on hit points, down to a third. 
Unicorns of Love continuing the siege. They are unrelenting. There is one Nexus turret standing, and the Unicorns say, we will have it. Oh, it's Fnatic caught down. Feverv is in trouble. We see that uh, Kikis is dropped as he was channeling his absolute zero. Dredge line knocks up multiple people, but Chachi forced to use that omen of death on himself. Got one. Double kill for Steelback. What can Feverv and his Steelback do? Vardax and Power of Evil alive. We do see the Dredge line connects with Hillisack. Look at the carries. They're both rooted in place. Hourglass keeps Huni alive as we see Yellowstar taken out. This is a two, three versus three in the base. Everything is down. It is all on Steelback and Huni now. And Huni, the Nexus is standing. Steelback has got Hillisung. He's critting massively onto Vardags. But Vardags and Power of Evil, they are pushing with the minions. Huni on full HP. To Fischer, will they go in? Glacial Path. We do see the shard connect, but look at the auto attacks. Power of Evil's got him. Can Power of Evil turn around? And he got from Steelback. He can't Vardags find Vardags. Steelback is looking for Power of Evil. Unicorns have done it. Unicorn to beat Fnatic! I have nothing more to say. That was such an awesome game to watch, man. Oh, coming from a fairly slow game one into this, <laughs> such a difference. Or when it is two teams who just love to fight left and right. I mean, at minute one, we had the first setup for a mid lane dive or mid lane gang. It happened, nobody died. And there was no laning phase. I mean, that was out of the window. It was just non-stop roaming around, not less support, showing how good he can be early game at roaming, but then also showing the power of a Yorick, guys. Get playing Yorick in Solik here now. Get home and play Yorick. Obviously, you want to watch this first. Yorick is the new thing. But power you have power of evil, at least in the mid lane. Taking down Febivin, man on screen. Steelback doing everything he could, but it just wasn't enough. I have never shoutcasted a more exciting game. 64 kills in 38 minutes. Blowing the kills per minute. Total kills records out of the water. And this is so important for Unicorns in that tight, tight race to secure a playoff spot. A win against the top of the table team is worth its weight in gold and so important for Fnatic. Yep. They are now tied with H2K. We are set up for a potential tiebreaker battle between H2K and Fnatic next week.